Hello, this is Joe Delio from the Live Community, bringing you a Cortex XOR K12 Playbook demo video presented by Nick Travis. Nick Travis gives a great demo of the Cortex XOR in a K12 environment when trying to lock down students trying to bypass a firewall security policy. Without further ado, I will hand you off to Nick. What I want to show you today is a solution for dealing with the free VPN and proxy applications that tend to plague K12 environments. The students use these to get around uh, any URL filtering or any security protections that have been put in place by the district uh, to protect those students. So we have app IDs for all of these things like Siphon, UltraSurf, Hotspot. Uh, we have the app IDs to block these. However, the entire purpose of these applications is to be evasive. And once they we update our app ID, um, by their nature, the developers update these applications to evade that app ID. So we're kind of stuck in an endless whack-a-mole game. And while it definitely works, I think there's a better way we can do this. The solution is changing the game. Instead of responding to the symptom of the VPN connection, right, we're going to stop it at the source. We can use the same technology to try to prevent it as we can to educate our users and change the behavior of our students. So kind of the analogy here, right, when a young kid tries to touch a stove or a fire or something hot, right, we may kind of grab their hand or move it away. Um, but we don't just stand there forever next to the, the hot stove and, you know, kind of knock their hand away every time they try to touch it. We knock their hand away and say, hey, you can't touch that, it's hot. We explain why they can't do that, why they shouldn't be doing that. Um, and what that does is then, you know, that user learns this is what they should and should not be doing. Same thing with spam or phishing, right? So we know that we can't prevent 100% of phishing emails that come through with a spam filter. Um, so we prevent everything we can, but then we also have to educate and train our users on what they should and should not be doing. You know, what email behavior is allowed and not allowed. So let me kind of jump into this demo and show you how this works. So it all starts on the next gen firewall with a log forwarding profile. So I have a rule that is set up that just does app ID and logs everything. So here, when we see in the traffic log, uh, the application of Siphon, which is what I've got set up in the lab here, coming from the trust zone, we're gonna take two different actions. One, we're gonna send a syslog message to Demisto, where it has now been renamed as Cortex XOR. We're gonna send that syslog message over, and then we're also gonna tag this source IP address um, as a bad student. Uh, and I have a timeout here for the next five minutes, meaning after five minutes, this tag will dynamically come off. In a real environment, this may want to be more like 45 minutes or something like that to cover an entire class period. But for the demo purposes, I just have it set to five. So once we tag this user, so we've had a, st a student use a VPN application, we've tagged them, they now have a more restrictive policy applied to them. So if I look at my security policies here, you can see I've got a bad student allow uh, if they are in the bad student address group, which is dynamically created based on that tag, then we're going to allow DNS, SSL, and web browsing. Any other application is going to be dropped. So in addition to restricting them just to these three applications, I can now start decrypting their SSL traffic. I've seen them do something that's against our policy, so they've kind of lost the privilege, right? I'm going to apply even more um, security controls on this individual. And again, if they have that bad student uh, tag, they're going to have this policy applied to them. So that's what we're doing in the firewall. On the Cortex XOR side, uh, here's the playbook that I created to run this. So the playbook's triggered by that syslog event sent over from the firewall. First thing we do is pull out the IP address of the user. And then I have a sleep built in here just really for these demo purposes when we run this live. Um, and then I break off into two paths. One, I'm going to send an email to that user saying, hey, we've seen you doing this, um, you know, using this VPN application, which is against our policy. Here's why you shouldn't be doing it. We're notifying you. You're in a more restrictive policy now for the next hour. At the same time, we're going to reach back into the firewall and make sure all the sessions for that user are terminated. So if they successfully set up any VPN connections, we then kill those VPN connections. And this part's really critical because these applications, again, are designed to be evasive. If we block the siphon tunnel based on app ID, it's going to fall back to an SSH tunnel. If we block SSH, it's going to fall back to all these other ports and protocols. Uh, and it is a challenge to block. It can definitely be done, 
but it's challenging. Here, we're just gonna let it go through so we see it easily unencrypted, and then we'll just go back and kind of pull the rug out from underneath it. Uh, so this is the playbook that runs, and let's go ahead and fire off this. So if I check my uh, kind of my test student machine, make sure I've got, I have browsing connectivity. This is the IP address I expect to be getting added out. Uh, I can also ping. So ping is kind of useful here in the testing because most of these applications do not tunnel ping. They're just doing like a, a proxy for the web traffic. So now I've confirmed my connectivity. Let's go ahead and open Siphon. And it'll take a few seconds here to connect. All right, so Siphon's connected. It's showing me that I've got this 173 IP address. We can just go over here and double check that yes, our sessions are going now through Siphon. So if I jump back into the firewall and go to the logs here, so my traffic logs, I'm looking at this host for the last 15 minutes. I can see here Siphon on port 80. We allowed this out, and again, we, we allowed this because we don't want it to be evasive. We just wanna see that it's there. Um, so what that means is we're now uh, in the background, we're now applying that tag to this user, right? So if I go to my address groups, my bad student dynamic address group, you can see that this has now been, this uh, IP has been tagged now. If I go back to Cortex XOR and go into incidents, we'll see if we can catch this one running here. And this should be at 15.07. So let's go into this one. So here's the incident that was automatically created and we, looks like we missed it. Uh, but what happened, it was triggered. We pulled the IP out. We had this pause, which wasn't long enough for us to grab it. Sent the email, killed all the sessions, closed the investigation, right? So this is closed with no intervention. If I jump over to my inbox, you can see that I have this email here, right? We've detected unsanctioned applications. Uh, you've been placed into a restrictive policy for the next 60 minutes. If I go back to my VM, we can see that Siphon is now trying to connect because we went back in and killed that VPN connection. If I try to run another ping, I'm not able to run a ping. Um, and again, that has nothing to do with Siphon. That has to do with our new policy being applied, uh, dropping those pings, right? So we see uh, the ping being dropped because of the bad student block policy. Now, I also at the moment cannot browse the web. Um, however, that is because of the way that Siphon works and how it kind of instruments the browser. So as soon as I tell Siphon to stop, and close this and let's open a fresh browser that Siphon hasn't interfered with. And I'm able to browse the web. I'm getting the IP I expect, but my pings are still blocked, right? Because this is being done based on app ID. If I jump back to the firewall and go to the um, address group, I can remove, I'm gonna unregister the tag here that was automatically applied. And again, this would happen dynamically after my time limit was up, I'm gonna speed it up here for our demo purposes. As soon as I say okay and close, this happens in real time. Uh, we don't have to have a commit. So within a couple seconds here, we should see these pings start going out again. There we go. So now I have full connectivity back to this machine. So the overall idea here is with a very simple playbook, um, we can detect an action, we prevent the students from being able to use these free VPN services. And at the same time, we're educating them through email uh, directly to them. Uh, maybe if they keep doing it, we can email the principal, the parents, etc. We're going to educate them to get them to change their behavior for us um, so they can, you know, really protect themselves uh, as they go on into adulthood. Uh, if you have any questions, let us know. Appreciate the time. Thanks. Thanks, Nick, for that great demo of Cortex XOR. As always, we welcome all questions and comments below. If you enjoyed watching this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to be notified of all of our new videos coming from the live community. Thanks again and have a great day.